Um, the session itself is mo mostly focused on web development, but the recommendations and the tips that I'm going to give and the, ad what the advices in general can be applied to software development in general. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Martina, and I'm 24 years old, and I come from Macedonia. And, um, except coding, I like, I like cats, and I'm not a TV series person at all. Although, I have this pretty awesome Photoshop picture, thanks to my colleague, Sebastian. <laughs> so I'm Jon Snow. Um, Something about my education. I have finished my bachelor studies back in Macedonia and then came here in Sweden to study and to get the master's degree in software engineering back in um, September 2014. After I finished the master's studies, I um, got a job in a startup called Detectify. So Detectify is security service that acts like a hacker and which purposes to monitor websites and to find vulnerabilities that are um, there and to report them on their owners. So this is how most of the time I like to look at Detectify. Um, basically every day we are um, bombarded from informations about hacks that had happened on websites and companies all around uh, the world and on the internet, basically. So these are some, these are some of the posts that we had uh, throughout the year about um, some important or famous hacks that happened. Um, so being surrounded with uh, some of the greatest Swedish a white hat hackers uh, meant a really big challenge for me. Um, it really, I really felt like I should learn more about security since I was surrounded with everything about security basically every day and I needed to step up my game. So I'll take this as a story uh, that goes back to April 2015 when I was supposed to build a simple forum website application as part of my um, recruitment process as a coding challenge. So the forum uh, was supposed to be pretty simple, having login, logout, uh, creating account, uh, creating categories, uh, posting uh, tweets and posts, replying to them, and you know, standard forum, nothing really special. So I decided now to go back and take a look at that code that I have uh, written two years ago. And here is a snippet of it. Even though it is, uh, it is in PHP, I don't know how many of you have met this language or worked with it, but those who know PHP know that this is pretty bad code. Those who don't know, I'm telling you, this is bad. <laughs> so that's a code that basically kind of make me cry because it's pretty bad. So I decided to take it as a challenge and try to hack my own code and to see how good it is when it comes to security aspects. So this challenge is me against Oh, was top 10 or 5, which I picked. But first, uh, what is OWASP? So OWASP is an uh, open application security project, which actually um, is a non-profit organization who is working in a, in a way of um, introducing security and bringing security to developers and making them learn more about that and making the internet more secure. So it's a, it's a place when you can learn as a developer a lot, um, get to see a lot of examples, and read a lot, and, inter and basically educate yourself. Um, 
So I picked these five common security vulnerabilities. Uh, so SQL injection, cross-site scripting, file inclusion, cross-site request forgery, and sensitive data exposure. To test them and to see how my code is going to be secure or protected from these things. So here's the challenge. I'm going to test each of them or to try to break my code in order to prove how secure or not secure it is. And this grumpy sad guy on the left side will be will represent each failed test and me being happy will represent every past test. <laughs> so let's begin with the first one. SQL injection. Probably you have heard this term so far. Um, this is an attack when, uh, which happens when the attacker al uh, actually alters the backend uh, MySQL statement in order to manipulate the user supplied data. So if this happens, the implications can be different, but most common are that the attacker actually is um, injecting some malicious data in your database, or uh, sensitive data that is already in the database is compromised in a way, changed, or the database, uh, or the database is uh, modified in a way, or some other uh, operations on the database are executed. So the attackers are usually, uh, in order to do this, um, to do this attack, they are usually looking at um, the input fields and the URLs that are uh, working directly with the database in order to prove that they are not secure. So I tried to do the same and um, tried looking at my uh, forum and how can I exploit it in a way and prove that it's not secure when it comes to SQL injection. And I was looking and find that, found that um, I'm actually using or providing the uh, ID when I'm listing the categories. So you can see you have uh, in the URL you have category.php and provide that as a parameter the ID equals five. And then we have the movies category listed. So the most simple way to uh, try and see if you can do a SQL injection is to um, have this really simple input and to put it in, by, in the end of the URL that is one single quote and followed by some logical statement or equal one of one and if you imagine this added on any MySQL query on the end or SQL query in general, um, this will result in true. So that's what I did and this was the result. As you can see, uh, the URL is changed so basically with things that I have entered, one single code and or one equals one, of course, now I code it. And the result is um, getting an error message. Well, the first line is basically what I'm providing in the code. And the second one is standard uh, SQL um, error message from MySQL database. Which means that the code that was provided in the URL was, sex was successfully run on the database. Which means that anyone can basically attack and do an SQL injection on my database. And here is a snippet of how that code looked. So, pretty bad. You can see what I do is I'm basically just concatenating uh, the ID which is provided by the users and just adding to the SQL query and basically running it, which is a really huge mistake. So how to prevent this? First of all, never trust user input. You should never rely on the input that is provided by the user because it can be anything basically. And since you're the one that are working with your web application, you should be the one that are that, you, that decide what should be um, user input and what not accepted as a user input. 
Second of all, you should always have uh, parameter parameterized statements where the SQL query will be pretty much static. And what you do is you bind the parameters provided by the user uh, in the SQL statement later on. Also, escaping, like using a function that are um, escaping uh, some special characters in the input that is provided, and pattern check, which actually um, checks if the input that is provided is of the right type. So this is how the code actually should have looked like. First, there should be a prepare function called that is going to prepare the, uh, the SQL query. And you can see is selecting from the categories table and where category ID is question mark. And that is the place where the parameter will be uh, re re replaced with what, with what was supplied by the user in the next function, which is bind param. So yeah, I obviously failed this. <laughs> Pretty bad. Let's go on. Cross-site scripting. So cross-site scripting actually is um, a script that is embedded in a page and that is executed on the client side or the user browser. This can result in many different things. Usually it results in the injected scripts into the application. Um, stealing, it can result in stealing session cookies um, and running malware code on uh, web applications or victim machines. So same as the previous example, um, here the most vulnerable objects again are the user input and the URLs. But of course, they're not the other ones. So for this, in order to do this test, um, I needed to find a place where I can actually post a code or snippet or something like that. So I decided to take the form, which is actually used for um, submitting a category. And what I needed was actually some script that is going to be entered as, uh, or submitted as a category description. So thanks to my colleague, Frederick, who actually uh, made this script once upon a time, and he talked about uh, the script is actually loading a raptor on a web page. So I said, yeah, sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. And let's see if this is going to actually load raptor on my phone. Might be fun. So I added this uh, and submitted the category. And it actually went through. And it got submitted. <laughs> And I got this awesome router on my website. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. But we don't we are not supposed to have routers on our website. And you can you can see a snippet of the code, which is actually um, how this category is uh, inserted in the database. So nothing really special, just pasting or uh, concatenating whatever is uh, provided by the user and magic and raptors. So what is the lesson of this? How can we prevent this? Um, first thing that we should always think about is um, encoding or escaping whatever is provided by the user. Um, encoding and escaping it not when it's provided but when we are out within it in the HTML context. So it doesn't have to be that it is the output only in the context or in the, some tag in the, in the HTML. It can be in attribute, in JavaScript, in CSS, whatever. Another thing that you, uh, we as a developers should always uh, consider or think about is the content security policy or the CSP which is a method that um, actually provides um, to the owners an, an option to declare uh, approved origins that, of content that can be loaded 
and in a way prevent origins or sources not to be loaded on our website. And another fail. My score is pretty bad. Let's go on. File inclusion. Um, this attack actually allows to the uh, hacker or attacker to include a file, um, usually exploding a dynamic file inclusion that happens in the source code somewhere, and usually these files are provided in the URL. This can result in code execution on a web server, or it can lead to denial of service, of course, code execution in the client side, and sensitive information disclosure. So, I was thinking of a possible way how how to try and to see if this is actually possible on my forum. What I actually needed was, let's say, if my forum was uh, hosted on um, hackforum.com, what I needed is to have some ABC file that is going to be, uh, that's going to load or include a file provided by the users named example. And uh, as you can see, the code example, uh, what actually happens in that abc.php just includes the file that is provided by the user. So in this case, um, I'm taking two examples or two possible attack vectors. One is uh, called remote file inclusion and the other one is called local file inclusion. The remote, uh, remote file inclusion actually happens when um, instead of file name, um, the attacker provides uh, attacker sites and especially one page, which is called in this case attack page, where he has hosted some malware or, mal or malicious code. So once this is run, if you uh, are not providing any like check or just including this file, this code that is hosted on attack page is going to be run on your ABC page. Another example is the local file inclusion, which actually executes the code uh, that is already uploaded um, from already uploaded file called exploit.php. So this sounds pretty bad as well. How do we prevent this? Of course, you're going to hear this a lot never trust user input. So always try to avoid uh, passing user submitted uh, data uh, to input or, or input to any file system or to your framework directly. And use a filter to go through all these parameters that are passed and to um, prevent against possible file inclusion. Another thing that can be done is uh, use white listening and actually define by yourself what can possibly be included and what not. Also, restricting uh, execution permission of the upload folder is another option, and uh, having uh, size rest uh, restrictions in the uploaded files. So, since I didn't have any file inclusions in my forum, I'm going to consider this as past. <laughs> That's another way of how to prevent have this file inclusion, not use that. So let's go on to the next one, cross-site request forgery. Um, this is actually an attack when uh, an unwanted action is performed by a user who already is authenticated for that action without him really or her knew, knowing about that. So the result from this attack can be uh, changes in the, the profile information, um, creating a new user, uh, creating an admin, paying uh, transaction to the wrong user with the wrong amount, for example, and stuff like that. So usually the attackers, what uh, in this case they look for the user into the user profile page into their account forms 
and uh, into the transactions page. Yeah, so I already mentioned before that I had a form that I used for submitting a category. And um, I'm going to use this example and to try to do a cross-site request forgery attack by submitting a new category, but from totally new uh, website. So what I have to do in this case is have this simple form on some attacker website. And you can see that um, the form has two input fields. I hope you can see at least. Um, two input fields that are hidden and that they have um, value which is post attack. It can be anything, can be even a script. Um, and having this hosted on the, on the attacker's website or the uh, link that you will get like provided. And you can see in the form that the action, act, uh, that the action is to hack forum and decide add category. And this, in the end, has a script which actually will uh, submit the form once the page is loaded. So you wouldn't even notice, and everything that was in uh, sent is uh, sent in the form as a value will be posted in the database. And that was actually possible. So how to prevent this? Um, <coughs> the best way is always to use a unique procession token for each HTTP request. Uh, the token can be stored in hidden field, in a property in the form, in URL, or as I do in this example, um, yeah, it's in the property in the inputs of the form. Uh, another way to, to do this, to prevent this attack, is actually to require the user to re-authenticate uh, while doing some action. Uh, you might be, maybe have heard like of um, people uh, attacking other people with just sending a link that is basically, well, not going to do anything, but just going to like delete their account, just like that. So in that case, in that scenario, having the user to re-authenticate themselves, like enter a password, if you want to delete your account, will prevent this. And in the example that I'm providing, um, how I should have written that code, um, you can see in the inputs that uh, the name actually is in underscore some token and um, followed by name, which actually the token you, that you can see is um, unique procession and is going to be and is going to uh, prevent the the submission if it if it comes from another site. So another one failed so far, and one to go. Let's see how I did on this one. Sensitive data exposure. So this is an attack where the hackers are uh, basically getting a lot of uh, sensitive information about the users, IDs, uh, passwords, credit cards, whatnot, from the website. Uh, they can actually use this in uh, different ways. They can modify it, they can uh, perform a credit card for fraud and um, steal identity or things like that. Again, uh, the most vulnerable objects where the hackers are looking in this case are the input fields, URLs and um, data that is all sent over the network. So, I wanted to see, like, in the most simple way, how um, my application will feel regarding this. So I went to see how I'm storing passwords for the users. And I followed my uh, coding standard back then and just concatenating everything. And you can see that in this case, scenario is 
pretty much the same. So the password is basically hashed, just hashed, and passed to be saved in the database, which is pretty bad. Because a um, single file upload that can basically um, allow the attacker to receive all the passwords is going to end up pretty bad. And another thing is some um, at the using SSL, which I have never thought about, and I if I have posted this somewhere, probably wouldn't use. So without SSL, um, an attacker can monitor your network traffic and basically um, steal all the information that he needs and use them, use it anyway after that. So how to prevent this? Um, you should always make sure that uh, all data that is really sensitive is encrypted uh, in order to defend against these threats. Never, never create your own cryptographic algorithms um, because it is not working that way. <laughs> don't store um, any sensitive data unnecessarily. If you don't need the whole credit card number, don't store it. If you're not using it, store the last four digits or something like that. Um, always um, Make sure that your passwords are uh, stored and are um, protected by any um, algorithm, which is uh, such as bcrypt and uh, scrypt, which I'm just using as, as examples. And um, disable autocomplete and caching on the forms that uh, contain sensitive data. That is pretty important because caching um, on these forms might end up pretty bad. And use SSL HTTPS for login and any pages that actually can contain uh, some sensitive data. <coughs> so, there is my score. The challenge <laughs> ended pretty bad for my two years old code. Um, yes, as I said, um, this was just a challenge for me to check uh, how I have improved over time. And um, it, is, it was really great and a really interesting challenge. And actually, it triggered uh, some uh, pretty much similar action among my colleagues, just like to check out their old code, like, oh, maybe I should do that, and like check what was I writing like two years ago. So maybe it's something that you can also think about uh, how your code will stack up. Um, yes, so I'm not a hacker myself, I'm just a developer that was surrounded with uh, great security minds and uh, I've learned a lot in this last two years. Um, I'm going to share some of the things with you. So first of all, um, security comes with the very first lines of code. It is not something that you are attaching to the product or to the application itself. It is something that you should think about from the very beginning. And, as I said, my code from two years ago is pretty bad, but it's never too late to start learning, because as soon as you decided to do that, it's already good. Another thing, I have mentioned it a lot, during the slides, um, don't trust the user input, but also never underestimate your users because you don't know who they are and what are they going to provide to your application. And never think that, oh, my code is 100% secure, no one can bypass this. Trust me, there is someone that can bypass that. Um, be informed about the security aspects in technology. Always try to um, get your head around and think about security aspects and read about that and follow sites that are writing about that and just educate yourself better. And don't be an expert. Always stay open to learning. And the end, it may take some time, but it's worth it because it matters. And it matters 
because companies are actually being hacked like all the time. This is just one example of a pattern hack that happened last year, somewhere in October, I think. And they were actually uh, warned about that from our security knowledge advisor in France, Rosen, and they didn't do anything. So five days after they were warned, they got hacked, and 15 gigabytes of passwords and sensitive data was exposed, just like that. So, if you're still not convinced that web security is important, this is how I imagine you saying this is fine while everything around you is burning and falling apart. <laughs> and go hack yourself, or someone else will. <laughs> Thank you. Do <laughs> you have any questions? You can shut it now, or I'll be around here. Let's feel free. Okay. Cool. Thank you.